So another big story that's been in the news recently is the Equifax hack. That's something that's been impossible to miss. Please fill me in on the details as as you see them. Yeah, so the details are actually pretty sparse right now. Um, Equifax has not been forthcoming with how the hack happened, what systems were actually affected, other than the fact that half of America was essentially compromised, which in yeah. terms of total number... Ar arguably more than half, I would... Yeah. Um, is unprecedented. Um, uh -huh. The closest that we've seen before was the Office of Personnel Management hack that happened a couple of years ago where there were 20 million some odd records taken. Um, this is orders of magnitude larger and given the fundamental nature Equifax plays in the US economy, it's arguably several folds worse than the OPM breach. Right, in terms of sheer uh, uh, volume of data, or are we talking, is there something, is there some deeper reason there? So this is kind of the core of the US economic system at its heart, right? There's three credit rating bureaus. Right. They have all data on consumers' credit. This is kind of the last step of how do you confirm your identity to somebody that you're not physically talking to. When you sign up for a new bank account, they go to your credit report to verify personal details. They talk about previous addresses you lived at, types of cars that you've purchased, so that way mm -hmm. they can verify it's you. All of this data is now available for sale on the darknet including social security numbers. So literally, I could go buy the documents and become you if I wanted to be. <laughs> Who's interested in this data? Uh, is, is, uh, uh, who, who would buy this? And what, what for? So pretty much everybody, which is the other thing that makes this terrifying, from cyber criminals who are looking to do credit scams and just take advantage of the plethora of free credit and buying power that stealing these accounts gives you, all the way up to nation state actors who'd be interested in buying it so that way they can get counterintelligence information on U.S. citizens because right. it has the dispute mechanisms for bad credit and that sort of thing, which would arguably give counterintelligence officials the ability to single out people that they knew worked for intelligence agencies that had crap credit. So they're <laughs> very easy targets now. And there are people like that. Uh, it was so you and uh, you're an intelligence guy. Is this is this a bigger deal from an intelligence perspective? What nation state actors can get for this? Because I would assume that a nation state could, you know, it doesn't need a hundred and thirty million, hundred and forty million uh, social security numbers. It finds the person that it wants, and then it's pretty easy to extract that information. Is this a big deal for for? I don't want to name nations, right? But is this a big deal for some somebody that's trying to get in here or do something? Yeah, so this, I think, has a broad-based negative impact for the cybercrime angle of everybody is now vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of data stolen, the amount of data that's surfacing on the darknet is something that is unprecedented and is likely to cause massive repercussions in the U.S. economic system from a credit lending perspective and capital cash flows. Because of that loss of trust. Right. Because of the loss of trust and the ability of people to create fraudulent purchases. Right. From a nation state perspective, this is going to be very pinpoint accurate and very dangerous for individuals and for sectors of national security. because. Data is king when it comes to intelligence, right? The more data you have access to, the more ability you have to context things, the more ability you are to effectively make decisions and operate. Right. As a result of this, take the OPM hack and put it in conjunction with this. OPM shows your entire history, all your relations, all that type of stuff. Now you can marry that and say, okay, this person bounced around from apartment to apartment. That's probably a red flag oh, look, they have a lien on them from such and such credit card. Right, right. Now they're a vulnerable person and you know exactly who to go talk to. So so this is like, uh, uh, this data is now like on steroids, basically. Yeah. So the question is, now that we have all that, but this is an enormous amount of data. And I guess the last question I'll have for you for this video is, is uh, uh, how many people could possibly be affected? Because statistically, right, I'm a statistics guy. And you have 143 million addresses. A 1% of that would be, uh, you know, in the millions still. Uh, 
0.01. I like how many people could possibly be. So I think that question is going to be answered based off the utility of the first 100,000 records or so. Because okay. the thing that really drives most cybercrime is the profitability and the ability to turn mm -hmm. large amounts of data into a relatively strong cash flow. With these records, because it's in the news, because so many people are freaked out about it, if the first 100,000 records or so that somebody tries to monetize are locked down because people took advantage of freezing credit or the credit service monitoring that is being offered, they're unlikely to go through the other 100 million plus records because right. it's not worth their time from a monetization standpoint. So, so if we get lucky in that respect, it might not actually have that large of an impact. But if we get unlucky and the first 100,000 records or so are ones that haven't been locked down and they can monetize easily, there's a large incentive to go through as much of that data as possible and monetize it as quickly as possible before people figure out a way to make it right. unusable. So almost like vaccination, if, if we all do our best to monitor our accounts and lock them down, we might gain some sort of herd immunity hopefully so um, would that's... you would you recommend should we all freeze our credit should uh, we all sign up for fraud alerts despite how much of a pain it is it's really the only thing we have available to us right now as a way to stop this um, that mm -hmm. the information that was stolen is too fundamental to our economic system um, to not try to take some protective measures and so those are the only crude tools that we have available so we should do it now and hope that we can unfreeze them in nine months. All right. Fair enough. Thank you, Ross. Thank you.